What's up, everybody? Uh, just want to give you a little update on what's going on. Um, Saturday should be a really big brew day if uh, if all goes well. Um, it'll be my first five-gallon uh, all-grain batch uh, outdoors with the new equipment, you know, with the new burner and the new keg, uh, keg converted keg. So I got a few more things to get get ready before Saturday. And uh, one thing I did was order a. Uh, a ball valve kit from Bargain Fittings. I don't know if it's .com or .net. I'll throw the link up there for you. Super folks. Uh, great products at great prices. Great shipping. Can't say enough good about them. So I'll throw the link up there for you to look at. Anyway, got that in, and I'm going to get that installed tonight and uh, get the dip tube installed. And uh, that should be about it. Uh, I've got me a little ghetto uh, uh, stand set up so I can raise my burner height up a little bit so I can uh, use the ball valve to uh, after the, I get the wart cooled down to get it over into a fermenting bucket. So I'll show that whenever the time comes. Um, yeah, I've got the, the keg laid on its side. Um, hear my old knees popping? I hope you can see this well. It comes with uh, a nice half inch uh, stainless ball valve and a... I'm sure that's pretty loud. Uh, the coupling for the inside to put your dip tube on. I went and got the parts for that from Lowe's that I'll be installing here in a little bit. And the stainless steel barb to hook the half inch silicone tubing that I bought. Uh, highly recommend silicone tubing. I'm going to switching over to that. But basically all I'm going to do is uh, I'll take this washer to line everything up with. You've got a little curve right here in the bottom of the keg. Um, you want to get just up above that curve and you want to stay away from these holes uh, because your flames, you know, where the, burn, uh, the burner's hitting the bottom, the flames are hitting the bottom of this keg, they're going to, sh the heat's going to shoot up through those holes. So you don't want it to uh, get your uh, valve hot and burn the gaskets up. So I just pretty much centered it in between these holes and I just kind of rocking this washer back and forth until I know it's up past the uh, curve there. Then I'll mark the center, uh, take a, a smaller drill bit and, uh, you know, give me a starter hole and then a, a bigger drill bit and, uh, and drill it out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll show you maybe as I go, uh, try to make, not make it too long and boring, but uh, I'll show you the rest of it. All right, that was simple enough. Uh, Got the starter hole going, and uh, next I'll be using a taper bit that I borrowed from work. Uh, they have step bits and taper bits, uh, so this one's not marked. I'll have to take time and uh, stop and measure, but uh, I'm making a hole for this half-inch nipple, and uh, I think the recommended size is 13 sixteenths, if I remember correctly. I'll go look before I start it here, but uh, that's what I'll be doing next. All right, got the hole. Uh, all cleaned up, wash the keg out. Uh, make sure you get all the metal out of your keg. Wash it, wash it, and then wash it again. Basically, I'll take uh, this half inch nipple, which goes through the hole. I'll take some uh, Teflon tape, put five or six rounds on each side um, of the nipple. I'll take this washer, or this O-ring, and slide it over the nipple and on the inside of the keg this nut will go on the nipple so it'll be the nipple the o-ring will go up on the uh, nipple to act as a washer and then this uh, nut stainless steel nut will go up on the uh, the uh, nipple and all that will be inserted from the inside and I'll show you that when I have it done and uh, After that, uh, on the inside, there'll be the coupling, and on the other side of the coupling will be the uh, uh, drain tube. The uh, I can't think of the name of the proper name for it right now, but uh, that'll go on the inside, and then on the outside of the nipple will go the uh, ball valve. Uh, but first, there will be a washer. The washer will go up against the uh, the keg on the outside. Don't need a, uh, according to the instructions from uh, 
bargain fittings, you don't need the, uh, they send you another O-ring, but it's for a spare. You don't need one on the outside. So I'm going to get that all assembled, and I'll show it to you uh, as I go or when I get done. All right. Uh, simple process. Got the uh, ball valve installed, the half-inch ball valve, stainless steel. And there she is. Uh, like I say, that nipple was uh, coming out of here. The uh, washer went up against the keg. Ball valve screwed on the nipple. More Teflon tape on the hose barb. And there's the half inch hose barb. And on the inside you have the coupling. And what I'll do with the coupling, I have this <coughs> half inch uh, solder fitting that will go up on go up inside this coupling and then I'll uh, solder my pickup tube which I have to cut to length and bend uh, the pickup tube will come off of this fitting and come out just a little bit and turn down probably a quarter half an inch so off of this uh, bottom right here so I can get all the water or wart whatever I'm doing out because uh, this valve is up enough, you know, to where if you just use the valve, uh, you're going to leave maybe a couple of gallons, uh, maybe a gallon and a half of water or wort, whatever you, you're doing. Uh, so you definitely don't want to leave that in there. So the pickup tube, as long as you have your keg above whatever you're draining in with a hose, with the, uh, I put the hose over there somewhere. As long as you get the siphoning effect, you know what I mean. Uh, and it'll pull everything from, from the bottom of your pickup tube. So, uh, going to get that soldered up next and get it installed. What I'll do is I'll get the, uh, you see I just got it uh, temporarily screwed in there. I have to put some uh, Teflon tape on there after I get it soldered. But that'll go in there like that, that uh, brass or copper fitting. And then it's like six inches out to the center. And what I'll do is cut off a of, uh, piece of copper tubing pipe about six inches. And then I will put a 90 on there that I forgot I had bought so that way I don't have to bend it and uh, whatever length it takes to go down off of that bottom to make it a quarter half inch off the bottom is what I'll solder on that end so that's the way it's going to work some folks do them off to the side they do their pickup tube uh, they come over to the side uh, to leave all the trub trub however you want to say it and sediment uh, I'm just going to go ahead to the bottom because I'll probably be doing uh, hot bags and such so if it doesn't work I'll change it but uh there you go. I'll show you the process or the finished product uh, here in a minute. All right. Got the pickup tube uh, soldered together. And I, get, I did kind of a shoddy job on my soldering, but it'll work. It's, it's uh, sealed. Uh, so what I'll do is take my pickup tube. i probably boil it uh, to get all the residue and stuff off of it before I put Teflon tape on here and fasten it. But that'll just screw onto there, screw around, uh, and I end up with about a half inch clearance between there and the bottom. So uh, I'll just tighten that on there just to add and kind of show you. So there it is, folks. Uh, the stainless steel ball valve uh, with the barb for the silicone tubing and the uh, coupler for the pickup tube for the inside. So rocking and ready to go. Uh, hope it all goes smooth. Like I said, it's going to be my first uh, all-grain brew using this system, so I'm, I'm sure there'll be some bumps uh, in the road, but uh, we'll get it worked out. As long as we're having fun, right, making beer, we'll be all right. So appreciate it. Like I say, I, as always, if you got any comments, questions, feel free to lay them on me. Uh, appreciate any feedback. Uh, I'm learning as I go, so uh, watching a lot of videos, reading all I can, so uh, we'll catch up with you later.